Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by 3-0 and prospect Hopi Price. How you doing? I'm all good. How are you? I'm very good, thanks. Um, yes, yeah, so your opponent for February the 13th got announced this morning. Yep. Former Central Area Featherweight Champion, Zahid Hussain. Do you think without the pandemic getting in the way of your um, activity so far, you'd be taking such a huge step so early on? Um, maybe or maybe not. Obviously, like like I said, um, with the first year of me being professional, then I probably would have had six or seven fights, but I only had two or three because of, because of the pandemic. So now I think time's changing and it's better for me, if anything, because I don't really want to be staying around fighting people who's who's not coming to win and fighting journeyman. Uh, I, I want to fight. I want to be in real fights. So, like you say, it is a step up, but I think my team and me know how good I am. And February 13th, um, it's time to show how good I am, really. And you, as you said, you were planning to have six or seven fights in the first year. You had your first two fights in about five weeks. And then you have a big yeah, those gap. Are together. Well, yeah, and then you have a big gap till fight camp, and a big gap again since because of the um, COVID pandemic. Yeah, has it been frustrating at times? You've obviously got age on your side, but you want to be out all the time, don't you? Yeah, of course. Obviously, it is frustrating, but um, I think the main part is I've stayed in the gym. You know, I've never took no time out of the gym, and I've just kept on improving. Obviously, like you say, um, I think a lot of fighters went when the pandemic did come around, they just sort of took the foot off the gas a little bit, but. In my opinion, it was a bit of um, it was time for me to close the gap on other fighters. While they was not doing, I was still learning and, and and improving. So for me, that's how that's how I took it really. Just tell us how you and trainer Dave Coldwell have kind of gelled more during that time you've had because you have been in the gym a lot more. Some of his yeah. fighters that he's worked with in the past aren't in the gym anymore, so he's got more time to devote to the ones who are still there. You must have benefited yeah. from that. Yeah, definitely. Like say, um, we were just in 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 the lockdown, and then um, obviously just coming back to the gym and having no no fight there at first. Um, we just slowed things down, you know, and and worked on on technique and and them sort of things, which is is good because normally you've got a day and you've got to work towards that day and sort of put your foot on the gas. And it was good, really, because you didn't have to you didn't have to worry about as much say coming in the gym be feeling tired from from strength conditioning or or say for instance um you didn't have have as bad as like as good diet you didn't have to diet as much so it was just um it was just good really just to just to learn technique and i feel like i improved i've improved loads like you said there's only three of us in the gym now which at first it was only me and jordan and every day we saw it's sort of like one-to-one -one training there enough or, or only two of us anyway so we get a lot of time with dave and obviously it's better for us we we, we learn more You've got great amateur pedigree, of course, but has it been helpful training alongside people like Jordan and Larone yeah. as well now, who have been to definitely. domestic top level, at least, in the professional side? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, like you say, you can be... I was I was a top amateur, but obviously the pro game, it, it is different. It's, it's like a different sport. So for me, just to, to learn off them, and I'm sort of one of, the, one of these people, I'm like a sponge. I just soak everything up and... and when people do stuff and learn stuff, I take it on board, I listen and, and try and use it. So I think without them boys in the gym, I want to progress as fast as, as I have done, really. What are the main areas that you feel you've improved on in the last year in the gym? Um, Just all around. Like you said, the amateur game is like a sprint. That's how I can explain it. It's, it's 100 mile an hour. Obviously, for me, I think the pros suit me better because... I can take my time and, and and sort of plan my way through the fight sort of thing. I can what I'm doing pays off can pay off later on. Whereas the amateurs more about some points it was who can throw the more shots. Do you know what I mean? So now um, I think in the pro game I think a lot more it's a lot more technical, a lot more li little movements rather than just it's a lot more of a of a, of a strategy than it is then it is just a 100 mile an hour sprint. So I think as the rounds get higher, you'll see the best of me. What do you make of Zahid Hussain? Have you seen much of him? And if so, what do you kind of identify as his strengths and weaknesses? Um, I haven't seen much of him. Um, I've seen a little little clip of him, but 
for me, any opponent I've ever had, I don't really watch him that much because it, it's going to be different when, when I'm in there with him. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm different to whatever he's come across before and what other fighters is doing, it, it's not going to be the same as sort of, sort of what I'm doing and, and vice versa, really. Obviously, he could box one way against someone else, but not against me. So I don't take much from him. Um, obviously, I let my coach do my research and I just carry on doing what, doing what I do really and I'm going to do what I'm going to do so that's it Now you've um, fought between Super Bantam and Feather in your first three fights so yeah. far obviously no titles on the line so you don't have to make a limit as such but you're only 20 you're going to be 21 a couple of weeks after the next fight is it hard to plan where you're going to be when you start challenging for championships because you're still growing at least filling out if not growing height wise as well? yeah like um Obviously, I can't plan too far in the future, but all I can say is at the minute, obviously, I, I met the Super Bantam quite comfortable, and this fight's at, I think it's 8-12, which obviously there's no point in me making the, the championship limit. N nobody does that until the box for a title, but it's sort of been the fights I've had to take, which, like you said, the last opponent boxed as high as light welterweight, so he was coming in like 9 stone 4, and it, I think it got made at 9-2, but I still weighed in 9 stone, just because... That's how that's that's how my body is really. Um, I sort of just what I get told. That's it. I make I make it, I make it comfortable, but I know I can box from eight twelve super bantamweight featherweight. I don't mind. And Zahid Hussain's probably in the top twenty UK fighters at featherweight. So beating yeah. him, if you're going at super bantam, you're not far off challenging for you know area or English title yourself. Is that something you want this year? Um, possibly yes. Towards the end of the year, like you say, um. This fight's still a six rounder, but I think this is my last six rounder, and I'm ready to go straight up to eight rounds. And possibly after the eight, an eight rounder, I'll, I'll look for, look for like say a title. Um, to me, I just leave the fight like the matchmaking all down to me to me promoter Eddie Earn and my manager Dave Caldwell. And for me, I know skill wise, I'm I'm as good as good as anyone in in Britain. I just know that, but it's just about even though I've got to step up, still taking my time as such and just still getting the rounds under my belt. And when, when they say I'm ready, I'm ready, I know I'm ready. And aside from the obvious, you know, winning a world title, what, what are your kind of dreams as a boxer? What are the kind of boxes you want to tick apart from that, you know, key thing that everyone wants? Yeah, well, for me, and I know it sounds a big statement, but I didn't set my goal to be a world champion. I'd like to be a, a multiple world champion different weights, undisputed if possible. And obviously it de all depends on the fights really. But while I'm still at this level, I'd still like to, to go through maybe the, maybe the traditional route as well, win the British, win the Commonwealth, the European. If, if them fights in the future can be made for the belts, then, then I'd like to do so. That's often the hardest part, the kind of politics of making the fights. Because yeah. they said no one's ever done area, English, British, Commonwealth, European world. But, you know, there's so many belts now, it's hard. It's, it's hard, it's hard just to, like, obviously, now there's that many things what you can't make them fights for that belt. So you sort of just, just got to, it's not in my hands that, so I just don't worry about that. I just worry about training, fighting, and, and just doing my job, really. If you keep winning... You're going to get the fight someday, aren't you? Tell us some of the boxers you looked up to, either when you were first getting into boxing or even now, if there's anyone on the kind of world scene that you look at. Um, when I was younger, say in Britain, I think everyone when he was about my age, Ricky Atom was obviously in his prime then, so everybody was a big fan of him. And obviously Floyd Mayweather was probably the best fighter of our generation. So I looked up to him a lot. and But for me, it... When I was amateur, I did watch a lot of top amateur boxing because I knew the difference in the sport from a young age. So Lomachenko, that's why I do like him so much because he boxed. He was top of the world amateur when I was real young. So that's why I still I still like him as he's gone on to the to the professionals. And obviously, there's plenty of good fighters out there at the minute. Is he a bit of a template for you and, and for other young guys turning over in that he's translated some of that amateur form to the pros? Because not everyone does. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Because he had a lot of fights and he he cleaned up amateur. He won everything. But just you just got a look of 
I still don't think he's got the credit for what he deserves because look at the fighters he boxed so early. I think like you look at Gary Russell, and he, no one even mentions that. Like Gary Russell's a, a world class fighter now, and he beat him in what his third fight. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable to, to see what he's done. He won three or four. He's boxing now at lightweight, and obviously lightweight's not even his weight really. You look at the size difference in him and who he's fighting, and that just shows how special a fighter he is. What have been the key in your mind to what he's done, how he's able to take that amateur pedigree and turn it into a pro style, if you like? Mm. I don't think, like you say, obviously he has changed, changed his style. If you just look at the, the Salido fight and how he got a bit manhandled and he was sort of like, what's this? It was sort of like a bit of welcome to pro boxing, but you just look at how he adjusted from that to, to the next fight. I think his mentality is one of the, the key reasons of him becoming so good. I think if you look at them sort of fighters, Usyk and Lomachenko and that, they've just got top-level mentality that they they know when they walk to the ring that you, you see them, they've got no sort of emotion. They they know they're there to do a job and they, they know deep down that they're super confident in winning. I think that's one of the key things, really. Great stuff. Now, before we let you Adapting. go... As you say, before Adaptability. we... <laughs> Before we let you go, there'll be people out there that want to find out more about you and follow you on the journey. How can yep. they find you on social media? Um, my Instagram is Hopi Price. My Twitter is Hopi Price 1. And my Facebook is Hopi Price as well. Have people just always called you Hopi? Because obviously it's not your birth name, is it? Birth name. No. Obviously my birth name is Ivan. And obviously the, re- the reason for that is I've just got exactly the same birth name as, as my dad. But my dad always been called Hopi. So... When I was a kid, I was obviously getting called Hopi after my dad, but on the birth certificate, he got put the same as my dad. And honestly, I didn't even know I was called Ivan until I was probably about eight. I was going to the doctors and obviously they shouted me proper name. And my mum was like, oh, it's your turn to go. And I was like, that's not me. My name's my name's Hopi. So that was sort of how, when I first went to the gym, obviously the boys knew me as Hopi. And then when it sent through to sending off my licence, Oh, obviously, yeah. my, name, my name was Ivan, and like there and all Jordan that was looked, and obviously that's how the the Dragon name come along, really. <laughs> so that's why I ended up sticking with it. They they all called me in the gym, so so that's where it comes from, really. Does anyone ever call you Ivan now? No, <laughs> no, one. like unless I go to like where, unless I'm flying or yeah, like an official yeah, yeah. official. Unless it's official, I never ever get called it. <laughs> that's brilliant. All right, well, very best of luck, obviously, February the 13th. Look forward to watching it, and um, hopefully we'll catch up again after. Definitely. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Take care. Bye-bye.